Welcome to Science with Wes. Today we're going to be continuing our study of habitats and communities in grade four. We're going to do that by looking at adaptations of plants and animals. We're going to be looking at a slideshow that has been done by a Ms. Weinberg, who thank you for presenting this online. And uh, we'll go through the slides. And uh, what we'll be doing while we're doing that is we're going to be filling in this particular sheet here so that we can keep track of the new vocabulary that we're learning. Um, sorry if that was blurry. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. For now, let's get started shrink my head down so you can see the slide and this is called animal adaptations and uh, you can see that there's a toad that is hidden here and that is actually an adaptation that we'll be taking a closer look at today. Have you ever wondered how animals are able to survive in the wild? Animals have certain adaptations that help them to survive and we've got a picture of an ant and we've got a picture of zebras with all of their wonderful stripes. Let's take a look at the next one. Think about the way you dress in the winter. You don't wear your shorts and bathing suit when it's snowing outside. It sounds like common sense knowledge. We wear warm clothes and maybe even a hat and mittens to protect yourself from the weather. I agree. And what if you are having a snowball fight? Not at school, first of all and not in summer, second of all. You probably run away from the person throwing at you and maybe even try to sneak up on that person and throw some snowballs. That totally makes sense so far. The way you dress in the winter, as well as the way that you run and hide from someone throwing snow at you, are kinds of adaptations. We can separate adaptations into two categories, physical and behavioral. Let's talk about physical adaptations first. Physical adaptations are body structures that allow an animal to find and consume food, defend itself, and to reproduce its species. For those of you wondering what reproduce its species means, it means to make copies of itself or to have babies, and that would be the easiest way for us to describe that. Uh, I'm looking at the speech bubble over here, and it says, hey, I'm a walking stick. I look just like a stick you'd find on the ground. Over here it says physical adaptations help an animal survive in its habitat. Well, how would looking like a stick help this particular animal to survive? Hmm. So the first physical adaptation that we're going to look at is the use of camouflage, and that's the use of color in a surrounding. The most common uh, example of this is the chameleon, of course. The chameleon can change its color to match its surroundings. Can you do that? Um, yeah, you probably could. If you wore camouflage like army fatigues uh, to go uh, sit in a field somewhere, or if you dressed completely in white during the winter, that'd be something that you could do. Now, your skin cannot, so I think that there's a difference. Physical adaptation, the first one is camouflage. The second physical adaptation, thing that will, uh, a physical feature that will allow a, an animal to survive and to reproduce, uh, would be mimicry. It's looking or sounding like another living organism. The Viceroy butterfly uses mimicry to look like the monarch butterfly. Can you tell them apart? No, I can't. Uh, one is the monarch, which is poisonous, and one is the viceroy, which is not poisonous. So how would that help the viceroy to survive? Hmm. Mimicry, I think, would allow it to uh, not get eaten, because if birds know that the monarch is poisonous, they might avoid it. So mimicry is a good one. Another physical adaptation, <laughs> uh, chemical defenses uh, like venom, ink, and sprays. The skunk we know smells awful and a lot of predators will stay away from them and that's a really good physical adaptation to help it survive a little bit longer. Uh, the octopus will have uh, the ink which will, I guess, cloud it in the water so that it can escape while uh, its predators are disoriented or just blind because they can't see it or find it. 
Another physical adaptation is body coverings and parts, and this would include all the wonderful things like claws, beaks, feet, armor plates, skulls, and teeth. Uh, the one example that we have here is the elephant's trunk. The elephant's trunk is a physical adaptation that helps it to clean itself, to eat, drink, and to pick things up. Uh, claws, uh, you can think of lots of different animals. Wolverines would be one. Uh, lions would be another one. Uh, beaks, probably take a look at uh, predator birds like the eagle, and you'll find that their beaks are generally curved, and that's for tearing flesh, which is a really good physical adaptation. How does that help it survive? Well, they can probably find and eat and, and kill its own meat a little bit better with that. Those are physical adaptations. Now let's take a look at behavioral adaptations. And behavioral, the root word is of course behavior, which is how you act. And behavioral adaptations allow animals to respond to life needs. Oh, it's a cute little bear. It's hibernating. Hmm, something doesn't seem accurate about that. Behavioral adaptations are animals' actions. Remember that physical adaptations are body structures. Each organism has unique methods of adapting to its environment by means of different actions. Not physical body structures, but actions. We can divide behavioral adaptations into two groups. One is instinctive and one is learned. The instinctive, these behaviors happen naturally and don't have to be learned. The learned behaviors must be taught. So, instinctive behaviors are behaviors that happen naturally and don't need to be learned. And some examples of those in the slide are methods of gathering and storing food. Think about squirrels. Does anybody have to teach the squirrels how to do that? I don't think so, no. Uh, defending oneself. Again, think of the wolverine. The wolverine backed into a corner is a vicious, vicious animal and an awesome superhero at the same time. Uh, and defending itself is uh, probably helpful for keeping it alive, right? Hibernating, uh, you don't have to teach a bear how to hibernate, it just does it. Uh, finding shelter, yep, same thing. Think about foxes. You don't have uh, the mother fox or the father fox teaching the young how to dig a burrow or finding a burrow to take over. And raising young, Animals uh, sometimes don't need to be taught this. Um, and migrating. They don't have seminars for geese on how to fly south. Learned behaviors. Really? Bowling? We're going to go with bowling for learned behaviors. These are obtained by interacting with the environment and cannot be passed on to the next generation except by teaching. Uh, there are some predatory birds that are taught how to hunt small rodents in fields. And if they are, uh, let's say, injured and they have been adopted by humans and they are not given the opportunity to learn how to hunt from their uh, parent parents, then what happens is they have no idea how to hunt and kill small animals. And, and they can't do that unless they have been taught. And unfortunately, humans can't do that. So uh, if you find a bird in a field somewhere, don't pick it up, try to let it go. Either a parent will take it and raise it properly or it will be removed from the food cycle. In this lesson, we have learned about animal adaptations. There are two ways to describe adaptations. There are physical adaptations and behavioral adaptations. Physical adaptations are body structures. Some examples of physical adaptations are camouflage, mimicry, chemical defenses, and body coverings and parts. Behavioral adaptations are animal's actions. Behavioral adaptations can be instinctive or learned. The next time you, then the next time you read about an animal in the wild or when you see one on television, think about its adaptations. The end. Well, we've learned quite a bit about adaptations. Let's take what we've learned and make sure that we uh, document this somehow so that uh, we are better informed as to how uh, animals, at least in this slide, I didn't see many plants or any plants, 
here. Uh, what are some of the things that they can do in order to survive in a habitat? Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Welcome to Science with Wes. Today we're going to be talking about uh, line and we're just going to go through the slides um, you know as I'm looking at the picture here of uh, I'm looking at the voice over here I'm looking at this well our first physical adaptation that we're going to look at is camouflage and that's the use of color in a surrounding the picture on the screen right now is uh, chameleon. <laughs> I almost said gecko. 